Today at Gadget Class, I'm reviewing the Shars Aventor Digital Caliper. This is their large display format caliper. It does not have absolute origin, but it does have fractional measurement and auto off. This is going to be Shars' answer to the lower end of the market. For people looking at the Nikos, the Capris, all those cheap digital calipers on Amazon, this is going to be the one you're going to want to consider. If you're looking for something with absolute origin and SBC data output capability, Charge does make a nice absolute origin digital caliper as well. And I'll put a review to this down in the video description below. Those of you that are familiar with my videos may remember the review video I did about two years ago where I compared seven different digital calipers to the Mitutoyo Digimatic to see you know, if you can get a good quality digital caliper for a fraction of the cost of a Mitutoyo. And what I found is that you can, you can get a really good digital caliper from a good company um, and not have to worry about it uh, meeting its rated specifications. But you need to make sure that they're actually testing them at the factory. Nikos, Capris, they don't test them at the factory. Every Shars caliper comes with a certificate of calibration, meaning that someone at the factory actually took the time to make sure it meets its rated specifications. But what Shars is doing to one-up the entire market, and I have not seen anyone else doing this, is they are actually giving you the option to pay a little bit more and have it double certified by a third-party U.S. metrology company. This one here was uh, certified by Fox Valley Metrology in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, to make sure it meets all of its rated specifications. So if you want to make sure you're getting a top-notch digital caliper, Shars makes it easy. You can just pay a little bit more and get it double certified. So I'm going to put this to the full test. I have already done a whole series of measurements just like they did at the metrology company, measuring uh, gauge blocks at various points along the measuring faces to make sure there's no slop in the uh, measuring body there, um, both internal and uh, external draws there. A lot of the cheaper ones on the market, you can actually see through the internal measuring draws, meaning it is off before you even start. The Nico, um, you could actually see straight through it. Uh, I don't even know how they're getting away with that. Uh, these are good, just like the, the other ones on the market that are in the, the, the middle price round. Uh, this is a great digital caliper. In terms of specs, uh, pretty much all digital calipers on the market are good down to um, a thousandth. They're pretty much accurate down to a thousandth and uh, have a resolution of a half a thousandth. So that means they'll, they'll read down to four decimal places, but their accuracy point is down to three decimal places or the 0 0.001 range. So I'm going to put this to the full test. I'm going to test the power consumption both on and off, and then I'm going to do a whole series of measurements and show you how it works. One other thing that this one has that kind of one-ups it from uh, the one I recommended uh, last time I did this is the eye gauging Easy Cal. Um, the battery compartment door on the Easy Cal started having problems for some people, like the plastic weakened. They have improved that design on the Shars here. So this is this one is probably going to be my new top pick, especially since you can. Uh, get it double certified. So if you're looking for the cheapest but best digital caliper, I think the Shars Aventor large display digital caliper is going to be that. But uh, make sure you watch the whole video for all the testing here. Okay, in the on state, the Adventor is pulling 51.3 microamps, not milliamps, microamps. And that might not seem like very much power, but we're going to compare that to the Mitotoyo here. We're going to go ahead and turn it off, and in the off state, it's pulling 33 microamps. So to get watts, you're going to multiply that by the 3 volts of the uh, two AA batteries there to get 99, I guess they would be microwatts. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook up our Mitotoyo. And the Mitotoyo only uses 1.5 volts, uses a different battery. So we're only going to use one AA battery there. Alright, so now the Mitotoyo is on, and we are only pulling 4.7 microamps. Compare that to the uh, 5 or the 51.3 microamps that the Adventor was pulling, and that's substantially less. That's about 10 times less. Let's go ahead and turn it off, and we're only pulling about 2 microamps, so multiply 2 times the 1.5 volts and you're only getting like 3 microwatts, um, or uh, the 
the five that it's pulling while it's on times three, that's only like 15 microwatts compared to the, uh, you know, 99 or the uh, um, 150 microwatts that the Adventor is pulling. So the Adventor is drawing quite a bit more power. Luckily, the CR2032s uh, do have a little bit more reserve power. I would just make sure you keep a, a few more of these batteries on hand. And the fact that they include a low battery indicator is a, a good plus. Not even the Mitotoyo has a low battery indicator. And the fact that it does auto off is uh, going to help save your batteries also. Just keep in mind that it is, it is pulling quite a bit more power than uh, a Mitotoyo is.